Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar, The Future of Making. Thank you so much for taking time out and being here with us today. The world is changing rapidly and keeping pace with changes requires you to be ready to transform today's challenges into tomorrow's opportunities. Fusion 360 Increment, it's a three week technical webinar course series featuring best practices of industrial design, mechanical engineering, and manufacturing workflows. It's a great opportunity to engage with Fusion 360 India user community to learn, teach, inspire, and co-create with each other. Well, that's about me. My name is Varun Heta, and I'm currently working as a Fusion 360 community manager at Autodesk based out of New Delhi in India. Basically, I'm responsible for nurturing the user community and making sure that our customers innovate in their designs and manufacturing workflows. I also support Fusion 360 users become comfortable with our new product updates. And moreover, I set, plan, and implement strategies for Fusion 360 India community initiatives. I, I bring our local leaders and encourage them to start group networks and host meetups and webinars to bring together the group of professionals to share information and discuss common issues. Well, that's our collective wisdom. Uh, of the family. So at Autodesk, you know, we make software tools to help people with design challenges every day. We help our customers who design and make everything from skyscrapers to smart cars, from bridges to blockbusters. We help our customers who make buildings and cars with less environmental impact and movies with more emotional impact. We help our customers to automate how things are designed in the digital world and made in the physical world. We are helping architects simulate how the buildings they make they, that will perform. And we even help our site workers construct those buildings so they continue to perform after they are even made. We help mechanical engineers simulate the performance of cars before they are even made. And we also help manufacturing engineers prepare those cars to perform once they are made. And you know what? We even help some of our customers make movies that perform at the box office. Our tool automate the way our customers design and make things. In fact, we have been in the automation business for over 35 years. It's true that our technology has disrupted and changed many jobs, but automation is no doubt changing the way we work, but more importantly, it's also changing the way, or it's also changing the things we work on, what we even make. So rather than worrying about automation taking our jobs, maybe we should focus on opportunity on where we can take automation, where we can go together. And that's where we say, the future of making is here, bringing with it, radical changes in the way things are designed, made, and used. Here I would like to invite our first speaker, Dipankar Bhattacharya, who is the head of Autodesk Education in India. He will walk us through the future of making and some amazing customer case studies. Over to you, Dipankar. I think, I think you are on mute. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So thanks, Varun, and uh, good afternoon to all the attendees. I can see close to 250 attendees uh, for this webinar. On behalf of Autodesk and the entire Autodesk team, I would like to welcome all of you to this opening session of this uh, Fusion Increment webinar. Great, uh, so um, as Varun mentioned, uh, uh, what I'm going to cover in the next 25 to 30 minutes is uh, uh, the concept of future of making. Varun described it beautifully. And I'm going to focus more on the design and manufacturing industry. My name is Dipankar Bhattacharya, and I had the education experiences based out of Autodesk in Bangalore. This is a short introduction about myself. Um, as I mentioned, I lead the Autodesk education programs in India and SARC region. I am responsible for driving the um, Autodesk 
uh, education programs on the go-to market across the key stakeholders. That is the education institutes, government, other stakeholders, thought leaders, and so on and so forth. I'm a mechanical engineer from NIT Warangal and uh, having took more than three decades of experience uh, in sales and business development in various leadership roles. So with that, uh, I'm going to quickly jump onto the presentation. Uh, the way I have structured this presentation in about 25, 30 minutes, the first few slides, I'm going to talk about the global industry trends, some world statistics, uh, and some of the key opportunities, key challenges, why we need to do things differently. And then I'm going to move over, over to a few global customer case studies where they've used some emerging technologies. So one is from an automobile giant and the other is from the aviation industry. And uh, then I'm going to talk to you about some brilliant academic project which has been done by students of various education lighthouse accounts across the country. And then I'm going to conclude with uh, some statistics on uh, the skills gap and what Autodesk as a company is doing to bridge the skill gap between the academia and the industry. And then I am going to hand over back to Varun to, for him to talk, take you through some India specific case studies. Uh, one has a huge social impact and I, I would leave it to him to explain uh, those two case studies. And then we'll get into the Q&A mode. So with this, let me go on to the next slide. One minute. Doesn't seem to be moving. Just just one minute. Seems to be some technical issue. Just a minute. Okay. Sorry about this technical glitch. Uh, so uh if you look at the today's world population, we are at about 10 billion population. Oh, sorry, it's seven and a half billion population. And the projected population is going to be at about 10 billion by about 2050. And the other interesting fact is that the global middle class is growing faster now than any time in the history. The other interesting um, fact is the two third of us will live in cities by 2050. Very, very interesting statistics. And I just wanted to set the context here that what does this imply? What is the implication of this growing population? Now, all the people would need means of communication and transportation. They need energy, food, houses, bridges, and roads. They would also need products, right from refrigerators to cell phones. So the growing population creates demand to produce to all those products. And would you believe it that the current estimate is introduction of 372,000 new product introductions per year. This is a huge and mammoth number. Now moving forward, more people and more people are entering into the middle class as I mentioned. Hence, there is a demand for buildings, products, transportation and communication. So, what does this lead to? This leads to more is inevitable. At the same time, we also see shortages, specifically in terms of the resources. About 40%, four out of 10 manufacturers call the shortage of skilled workforce as one of their top challenges. And coupled with this, we have the aging population in mature countries, which amplifies this problem. And then, are we efficient as we believe? Are we wasting resources? For those of you who have built a house, you probably would have felt the pain. 30% of the material is wasted in construction. Would you believe that there is no waste in manufacturing? The next slide will give the statistics of 70% of all spare parts are never used. They sit in the stock and are wasted. So there is a huge wastage even in the manufacturing sector. So moving further, 
it is not only shortage of skill labor and waste of spare parts the other big thing is space is a constraint in most of the cities today and if you look at the image on the top right traffic jams are just normal and burn productivity and time we also have limited natural resources and the lifestyle of the rapidly growing middle class will consume more energy typically more than twice as much which depletes non renewable sources so what does this imply so while more is inevitable less is a reality so we cannot continue to continue as we do today we need to produce more products to serve this huge growing population specifically in the middle class at the same time with less negative impact on the planet okay two very very important uh, you know uh, statements producing more products with less negative impact so addressing the inevitability of having to do more along with the reality of doing it with less negative impact is definitely a massive challenge for the man manufacturing industry also addressing this fundamental capacity issue is also the biggest design and manufacturing opportunity so although i am saying it's a challenge it becomes an opportunity that the manufacturing industry would have ever had it's up to all of us to turn this challenge into an opportunity and that leads us to the opportunity the opportunity of better we can use automation technologies to make things better use better means of making them and we can do more meaningful work in the process okay so let me dwell a few minutes on what what we mean by better things now products that better fit their purpose and more customized to the user requirement products which are configured to match the expectation of the customer products that are durable easy to repair and recyclable so off the shelf products or ready made products no longer feed our needs or desires so this is resulting in mass production giving way to mass customization coupled with this the digital world is now integrated into physical products the things we make today contain sensors and software microprocessor and media they are more connected and intelligent than ever and allows us to add new business models to traditional hardware products there is an opportunity to create things that are more meaningful so i have so far spoken about design now let me move a step further as to how do we make those things we are capable of making products of increasing fidelity and complexity but producing highly configurable products profitably needs high flexibility in manufacturing now materials and manufacturing technologies like additive manufacturing and hybrid manufacturing the combination of both hybrid and additive man machining allows us to produce small volumes of highly complex products we could also be leveraging five axis machine and not only three axis machine and also take advantage of modern robo flexibility not just using them to perform one task over and over again and again and automation of traditionally manual processes will play an essential role in making things better so now there is an opportunity to make things of increasing value things that are profitable perform better and last longer so let me uh, move ahead on how what will change the way engineers and production engineers the way they would work engineers will no longer just use tools just to document their ideas in fact for the last couple of years close to a century they have been either on drafting boards and moving on to 2d and later on to the uh, to uh, later on to 3d 
So with resource shortages, a demand for more products and increasing product complexity, old ways of working are not enough. We face too many bottlenecks. Engineers and production engineers need to leverage automation to reduce lower value tasks so that they can focus on higher order value add task. Added to this, they will also leverage the computational power of cloud offerings through generative design to automatically explore design and automate tasks. And I'm going to take you through a little bit about GD in the subsequent slides. The other thing is connecting engineering with the manufacturing breaks down the silos and enables a digital transformation. So there's a seamless integration between design and digital uh, manufacturing. So engineers now can focus on their most valuable task. And automation gives us the opportunity to do more meaningful work. So this is what I wanted to set the context on the Autodesk vision on the future of making. Um, I hope uh, I could convey the message to all of you. What I would like to do now is take you through some case studies. As I mentioned earlier, the case study from an automobile automotive giant called GM. So let, let me go through this example. Now in the automotive industry, weight plays an increasingly important role. The products General Motors have, have made, <clears throat> make have changed a lot over the last 100 years. And so has the work on the assembly line. In fact, for close to 100 years, GM has used automation to optimize their production. They automate to a point where today a car rolls off the assembly line every minute. So totally automated assembly line. And every car contains more than 30,000 parts. But optimizing production alone is no longer enough to keep pace with the rapidly changing automotive industry. GM has had a vision of, of reinventing himself, itself by reimagining its business around electric vehicles. By 2023, the company has committed to bring 20 electric vehicles into the market. At the same time, and the development of an electric vehicle comes with a whole new set of challenges. Challenge one talks about mileage and battery weight. Number two, safety and lightweight, customer experience and affordability. The best way to solve those conflicts is to break with traditional workflows that don't give us good enough solutions. Let's now focus on the complexity and light weighting as an example. So <clears throat> GM has worked <clears throat> uh, with Autodesk in the generative design technology to help them reduce the number of parts that go into each car while making them lighter and stronger. Our generative design tools allows GM engineers to develop solutions based on the goals <clears throat> and constraints of a part, like where it connects to others, what it's made of, and what loads it need to take. So GM worked with us to develop and explore a prototype for this part, the bracket of the rear seat belt. Based on the goals and constraint definition, generative design automatically generated viable design options for GM to choose, taking into account performance and manufacturing viability or feasibility. So these were the different design options, not just one, but multiple design options based on existing design, which meant that GM engineers were able to explore dozens and dozens of valid design alternatives faster than they would have been able previously for a single design. For all the op options available, the one the engineers decided or was this a solution that would have been pretty impossible for a human being <clears throat> to design, but a human did this with the use of the emerging technology like generative design. So what were the outcomes of this? 
The solution, which was finally designed by GM, was 40% lighter and 20% stronger than the original design. Not only this, it is now printed on as a single part rather than assembled from eight components. Automation through generative design is enabling GM to make parts that are more lightweight and more fuel efficient. So the overall outcome is that automation is not just changing the parts that GM makes. It's changing their vehicles, <clears throat> their supply chain, the production process, and their entire ecosystem. The other point to note here is that they have done this, applied the GD concept only on one part and they have 30,000 components in a single car. Imagine if they apply the GD concept to all their 30,000 components. So GM's focus on innovation helped them create a better bracket. So this is a, a case study where uh, GM has worked very closely with Autodesk on the implementation and, and adoption of generative design as a competitive differentiator, which is re resulting in product innovation. Now let me move to the other case study, which is the case study from aviation giant Airbus. So this case study is on this concept of bionic partition. The bionic partition is a partition which separates the passenger cabin with the crew and the cockpit. So using GD as a technology, <coughs> Airbus arrived at different design options based on the design constraint fed by the designer. And this were some of the design iterative options that the system uh, prompted. Finally, the design that they chose was about 45% lighter, weighing about 30 kgs. Now, if, we, if, G, if Airbus applies this to the entire cabin, it would result in savings of estimated savings of 465,000 metric tons of CO2 emission. So the impact is definitely very, very huge. So these two case studies actually substantiate what Autodesk generative design as a technology can become a competitive differentiator for both these uh, giant companies. So what's the differentiation? for GM and Airbus. Today, they are able to differentiate themselves in today's fast changing market. How can they be prepared for and be successful in future markets? And how can you leverage all those technologies to get ahead of your competition? I would also like to leave you with one more thought of more, better, and less. To make more of what is needed by our customers, to do it with less negative impact on the planet. And this is what I had highlighted at the beginning of my presentation. And to seize the opportunity to make better products that were ever possible before. So this is the net net impact of both these companies and of the industry as a whole of more, better, and less. So let me now shift gears of talking to you about a few academic projects. We work very closely with academic lighthouse accounts uh, in India and South region. And these are two case studies from an institute in Bangalore called Dayanand Sagar University. The image on the left, on my left, is a rover board which was designed by an interdisciplinary team of mechanical and electronic engineering students from Dayanand Sagar University. And this has integrated VR with robotics to enable users to see and communicate at a place remote to their present position. The image on the right utilizes the Autodesk generative design tool to come up with a new design of the quadcopter chassis. One of the requirements is to be for the chassis to be significantly lighter than the conventional version, yet strong enough to sustain flight conditions. So two brilliant projects done by students of the Anand Sagar University 
These are two projects which have been done in collaboration with the industry. The one on my right is a, is a project between IIT Madras and Fiat Chrysler. IIT Madras works very closely with Fiat. And this is the design of the lower control arm of one of their vehicles for maximized stiffness. And as a result of GD, which was used by IIT Madras and Fiat design team, they were able to have a 30% weight reduction in this LCA component of the vehicle. So this is a pilot test which they have done. And moving forward, uh, we are working with Fiat to, to scale the adoption of GD through IIT Madras in some of the other components in their upcoming vehicle launches. The one project on the left, to my left, is a project from a small scale industry called Signet International and an institute in Kolapur called SIT Kolapur. This company manufactures auto components and machine tool assembly. So they designed a special purpose machine fixture, which was 88% lighter and 20% stronger using Autodesk generative design technologies. Two more projects. The one on the left, on my left, is a project with a huge social impact. Project designed by MNIT located in Jaipur uh, for people affected by polio. So this is a prosthetic or an assistive device called the glove foot which the MNIT Jaipur student team, along with the faculty team, is looking at commercially producing this club foot. And if you look at this component, the area, which is the calf area, which is assistive, design, which is assistive device will support, uh, needs to be stronger. And overall, the product needs to be lighter in weight. That is where the concept of generative design as a technology has been used. The ISDI, which is one of the renowned design schools in the country, designed this bamboo bicycle through their student and faculty team. So these are some brilliant academic student projects. These were displayed in some of the flagship Autodesk events like the Fusion Academy and the Autodesk University. And moving forward, we would definitely have more and more projects from the academic community at large. So this is basically showing the benefits of using Autodesk cloud offerings and Autodesk generative design as a technology. So I'm going to, um, having talked about the case studies, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this concept of this product innovation platform. Companies often ask us how they can participate in the changing world of the future of making. Simply replacing the vertical software solution will not yield the results needed to be competitive. At Autodesk, we firmly believe that to solve the future of making, what you require is a product innovation platform. At the heart of this environment is a digital data about the product. And then we have different phases, the design, make, and the use phase. And Fusion has different modules. It is a seamless integration from design up to manufacturing and up to the use phase of the design, make, and use cycle. Uh, the subsequent sessions after today is going to talk to you about more about the features and functionalities of uh, Fusion as a product. But all what I wanted to highlight here is the close connectivity between design and manufacturing using, using Fusion as a product. We also have a collaboration platform for the Fusion team, which is inbuilt within Fusion. And uh, you'll hear to get you'll get to hear more about Fusion Teams in the subsequent session. I also wanted to touch upon this concept of design, make, use, and beyond that, what is remake. The story is about powering the remake cycle with the machine learning concept. In the manufacturing industry, data collected about how a car was designed made and used will feed algorithms that help com companies remake a better car faster and for less. And similar is the case in the AEC industry. So design, make, use, and remake, very, very important and interesting concept, uh, which is enabled to the concept of machine learning. So this is the overall vision of Autodesk uh, on the non-future of making. I wanted to also touch upon 
why Autodesk is uh, propagating the concept of future and future uh, future of making. This again translates back to the skills gap globally and also nationally in India. The global skills gap represents a looming crisis across all industries that Autodesk serves. By 2020, there will be approximately 95 million workers that will lack the skills from employment, specifically in the advanced economies. I think Varun briefly covered, covered on this. 2.4 million open positions will lie vacant to skills shortage in the US manufacturing industry between last year and 2028. Okay. So, you know, this, this is a huge number of, of open positions in manufacturing. Coupled with this, our customers are facing huge challenges. The customers are facing huge challenges of the retiring workforce, ever emerging technologies, stiff competition for qualified talent, productivity issues with retiring workforce, and finally, an ever changing future of work. So, how do we solve this challenge? And what is the opportunity lying in front of us? The opportunity lying in front of us is the next generation. The next generation, which is approximately what I call the Generation G, people born after 1995, approximately translates to about 2.52 billion. And mind you, this generation is dig digital native generation. They are also tech savvy, highly curious and resourceful. And the world around them is also changing rapidly. So although there is a challenge, there is an opportunity in front of us, we can nurture this talent, the younger population who, who have been born after 1995, who can be skilled and they will be ready to get into the workforce in the manufacturing and other relevant industries. So at Autodesk, our job is to help inspire, engage, and prepare the next generation for the ever-changing future of work, thereby creating a talent pipeline to help fill this huge skills gap and what we call emerging roles in manufacturing and other industries or jobs of the future. So with this, uh, I have come to the end of my presentation. I would like to thank all of you for patiently hearing me. We do have a QA and a session uh, after, uh, towards the end of this session. Uh, what I will do now is hand it back, hand, hand the floor back to Varun, my colleague, who will take you through some very interesting, you know, uh, Indian case studies. And I would not like to steal his thunder. Over to you, Varun. Thank you so much, uh, Dipanka. So I'll unshare. Yes, that would work. Well, thank you so much for such an insightful session. It was valuable, it was amazing. And I hope all the participants got some very, very key understanding of the market trends, where design and manufacturing industries is uh, heading towards. And having said that, uh, you know, personally, I really, I'm very, you know, uh, observant on the GM case study, the way they worked and, you know, I always think like, I imagine like how much further automation could take GM after having those uh, great, you know, generative design integration in their seed well bracket. But what I want to say is, it's just not only about GM, there are other automotive companies who have joined the race too. And here is an example. We need not have to name this, this is Volkswagen. And uh, Last year, you know, they participated in a, in a design, design, design expo contest and they redesigned one 1960 omnibus using generative design and high-end electric uh, equipment. So they literally reimagined the bus and removed all the engines, added all the electric capability and did all the lighting using generative design. 
which looks amazing though it's still a con work in concept so a kind of work in progress so they're still figuring out to think about you know making it for mass manufacturing when we talk about manufacturing and we operate in india right so i have a very uh, very important case study study that i want to present to you so you see you know this uh, our country india it has a staggering number of person with disabilities and according to a research in 2017 that was undertaken by Ms. Nandita Saikia. She's a former Max Planck Research Fellow at Max Planck Research Institute. An approximate 26.8 million person in India have some kind of another disability. And the most common form of disability is the movement disability, which is impacting approximately 5 million person in the country. That's equal to 50 lakh person in the country. And this was kind of challenging. You know, we have a great prosthetic industry, assistive devices, and most of the uh, products that we have in existing market, they are imported overseas, which make them really expensive for a common man. And this company called Social Hardware took up this uh, opportunity and they decided that they will serve the, uh, you know, they will provide affordable prosthetics for the, in the hands of everyone. So they are changing the lives of amputees from low income communities through affordable prosthetics. It was founded in 2017. It's a company dedicated to create sustainable solutions for the society's biggest healthcare problems. And their aim is to systematically replace overseas imports with locally manufactured goods, enabling healthcare providers to help more people faster and at much lower cost than international supply chains. So basically this company, as you see, this is a startup and the kind of operating model the, they reimagined was, uh, it was called remote based collaborative working model. That means there are five individuals working from five different countries, right? And we have been using a lot of tools for data sharing and collaboration. You say it, you, and uh, think about that. We use a dedicated tool for our word, for our data sharing in document. For the presentation, we have a dedicated tool that's cloud enabled. And same goes with storage devices and everything. And even we say same goes with design and manufacturing. So that's exactly where this our, our customer social hardware started using Autodesk Fusion 360. This is a software which is a cloud enabled CAD CAM CAE software uh, that can take up the entire design and manufacturing workflow with single solution. So this was their first concept art, the one they designed and looks pretty amazing. Here's the another view. I personally like it a lot. So you see this is like very, you know, sci-fi. They even plan to have, uh, you know, electronics inside and some sensors and some actuators to move the fingers, right? And what they realized was still uh, people who want to use these prosthetics are impacted by its overall weight and usability and even the convenience. So they tried a lot of things to reduce weight, like they tried uh, redesigning the socket. So you see this portion on the right is socket, and the, the left portion is called the hand unit. And the steel portion that you see is the disc connector. So they tried reducing the weight as much as possible, and they did a lot of iterations. They even did uh, redesign this, uh, you know, organic looking socket by using T-spline. Again, this is not generative. A lot of people think this is generative, but it's not. So here's the catch. This people, this team is like very young and vibrant team and I personally uh, like that approach a lot. So they have been like a Marvel fan. They are like super fond of comics and infographics. And then they did, once I got the, uh, you know, one email from my friend Abit, who is the co-founder of Social Hardware, and they said they want to design prosthetics to make people superheroes, right? And who are into, you know, like who are into like low income uh, communities and they tapped people who are into agriculture jobs and who are amputees. So as you know, the team is like quite fond of, you know, superheroes. They started figuring out what kind of superhero they should get inspiration from. So they look at you know, Iron Man, which is like, you know, kind of rocket science to hi-fi. And then uh, they got uh, the hold of Spider-Man. 
Right. And as you see, Spider-Man is basically, you know, it has something as the, he adds as a capsule in the wrist and it becomes like it got like extra power in the hands. And while further operating and they notice that there is a toy available in market that literally everybody can wear here and then it can change a lot of things. So you see on the right, there is the metal connector. That's exactly what they designed after having the uh, prosthetic arm. Right. So they named it avocado wrist connector. So avocado because of the shape and, uh, and the form factor. So the way it operates is it's a 300 gram stainless steel 317 part manufactured using three axis milling. And uh, this is exactly where this wrist connector is placed. So in order to use this wrist connector, the user need not have to use this hand unit. They only have to use this wrist connector and the hand unit need not have to be automated. So that means they literally removed all the electronics from the hand unit and all the sensors, everything, and they just put this wrist connector. Now, what makes it different? Thing is, you see all the tools which are available in market, they are like super complementary to uh, this wrist connector. So let's check it out. So this was one of the pilot that did. So they took hold of five of these tools and they designed the socket accordingly that can fit all these things together in place like that. And this is a spring loaded attachment. So user need not have to use, you know, a lot of things to remove the, uh, remove the tool from this, this connector. So just, this is like, you have to press the spring, you have to press the pin and take out the tool. Now, the most important thing is think about this 300 gram is if it's like fit, fitted to your wrist or someplace, it will add a lot of weight and you'll get tired in, in a very, very less time. Right. So they're in mechanical engineering team. They started taking out the extra weight. So, you know, that's the process. First, we design the concept and then we first start iterating that we make it more lightweight. We make we start making it more beautiful and, and effective. They tried reducing the weight by doing some basic uh, calculations and they got this one, which was 168 gram. Again, not bad. It's a good deal. We, they almost reduced that to almost, you know, like 56, uh, 56%. Now the thing was they started uh, using generative design at that point and made a case study in which they added the obstacle geometry and the uh, preserve geometry. By the way, we have a dedicated session for generative design. So it's going to happen in coming weeks. So stay tuned for the agenda. This is exactly what they got. And finally, they took out one outcome, validated that and found that it was just merely weighing 56 gram uh, the material was stainless steel and the manufacturing method they uh, selected was added in manufacturing. That makes it SLM. You know, SLM technique is the metal based advanced <coughs> added manufacturing. So looks amazing, not bad, but uh, the added manufacturing manufactured part was adding a lot of cost to the product and they want to make it more and more cost effective. So to, in order to make that, they literally redesigned the entire socket using their own skill set, just like that. And they made it complementary for normal three axis milling. <clears throat> so they got a little uh, addition in the weight. So from 56 gram to 85 gram, the material is same. And still this can be manufactured with their same manufacturing vendor. So they need not have to invest a lot into a new manufacturing technique. They can still manufacture the same part with the same vendor with the same resources. The, after doing all sort of simulations, uh, they realized that there was also some form factor which was missing in the actual design. And later on, they realized that the left bracket was done using their team by, by their team members, and the right one was the outcome from generative design. And the combination was the final outcome. So they integrated the human design and the generative design, and that's why we always say we call I, we call uh, <coughs> social hardware as the the team that literally humanizes generative design and we got a new bracket and this is the work process from 300 gram to 168 to 56 to 85 to 96 as a final bracket which is a significant amount of weight reduction so from 300 gram to 96 gram and the entire work was done which was supposed to take at least two months to make it happen to two weeks that was pretty pretty amazing and here is another view like that's the back view and that's the real component. See, 
So Social Hardware is working with APD, that's the Association of People with Disability. They are uh, uh, really, they're like a very young and vibrant team. They are like so enthusiastic about it, adopting to new technologies to help people in the way they do their, their everyday jobs. And not only this, I personally like the way they are approaching the instruction manual. So you see, we have been doing, a, getting, when we design a product, we also say we have to automate the way uh, consumers operate their uh, our products, right? And usually what people do is they make an instruction manual. We write like rules, regulation, and all sort of things. This team, they literally redesigned from the regular text-based instruction manual to a comic book. And I personally have never seen somebody doing like that. And this was amazing. They made a comic character and it was telling this story when an amputee gets, uh, you know, a social hardware kit and they purchase this, uh, you know, entire hand unit with the avocado risk connector. They take it to their local uh, association of people with disability centers, like we have centers. They go there, that's a fully fleshed fabrication facility. And then, you know, they get that fabricated. So it's a very good way of, you know, communicating with people. And we have another company. So that's NBIL called Next Big Innovation Labs. They are the first company who made uh, India's first 3D bioprinter. And uh, we have one more upcoming session in, in coming days, specifically on this machine. So this is a 3D printer that literally manufactures human tissue. I know it's amazing. I'll not disclose too much information, but the good thing is this is one another case study where they did use sheet metal manufacturing, three axis and all sort of high end manufacturing using one tool. And they made a fully fledged, amazing uh, 3D bioprinter. Well, talking about this, we have been really carefully observing the, the need of the real time collaboration, instant accessibility and the integration. We have been seeing like industrial designers, mechanical engineers, manufacturing engineers, and even electronic engineers, when they all work, they all have to work together as a team. You, you name any product these days, whatever we have in market have some sort of electronics in that, right? They are like becoming smarter every day and we need like better ways of communication and collaboration, specifically in design and manufacturing. And that's exactly why we built Fusion 360. So this tool is the integrated CAD, CAM and CA software it can eliminate your entire disconnected product development process. It can do electronic design, industrial design, simulation, documentation with drawings, generative design, manufacturing, rapid prototyping, and 3D modeling. Well, uh, I won't take too much time. I want to talk about what is coming tomorrow. So we have, we are going to have Sirsa Sasikant with us. She is the founder of Design Sangam, which is the online platform for consumers and uh, you know freelance industrial designers and mechanical engineers. So she is going to talk, uh, talk uh, teach about first time CAD modeling approaches. She's going to talk about what is this software. If you have no background, have never used this, join us tomorrow. She is going to talk a lot about how to start, what is design and how to go ahead with, you know, the first time CAD approach. Well, adding to that, uh, in case anybody found this difficult, the best way to log into upcoming webinars is just go to the website and on the uh, bottom right corner, you see this register button that will be changed to watch now. Just log into your account and click watch now. You'll be able to log into this. Here we go. And I tried making some, uh, you know, animation, which doesn't complement to my timeline. Still, it's good. And last but not least, we are running an extended access program right now, which is specifically, uh, you know, this is going till June 30. So we are providing these tools for free of cost. So these are commercially available. So if anybody wants to access this, this is like the right time to try it out, understand how it goes. So these are the things. We'll share one link after this webinar. And if you want further updates, you can reach out to us via email, via social media, via your best uh, convenient way. Well, this is the time. I want to end my presentation here. Uh, this is the time for, to have all the question and answers and I'll just stop sharing my screen. Thank you so much. So including today, so we have, you know, close to 15 sessions and the, for the rest of the sessions, I'll encourage all of you to please attend those sessions starting from tomorrow. Um, all the sessions are going to talk about uh, 
the features and functionalities of Fusion 360 as a product. So Varun talked about this a totally integrated product, which does from A to Z. I think he has covered all the gamuts of rapid prototyping, manufacturing, design, so on and so forth. So I'll encourage all of you to please attend this uh, session uh, for the rest of the session. From my behalf, I would like to thank uh, you, Varun, for hosting this session. And I would like to thank all the attendees for patiently hearing our future of making vision. And I look forward to, you know, for the, for the rest of the sessions. And thank you one and all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you one and all. Have a good one. I'll thank see you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Guys, wait for me. We'll catch up tomorrow again. Have a good one.